from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary and my swamp based beings, uh, all otters and all, you know, all our friendly friends uh, out there. Oh, boy. Talk about a treat. Uh, what would it be? A, what's a treat in a swamp? Uh, if you're a swamp based being, let me know. Could you just, you, I mean, I would wonder, even like fictional swamp treats. Because you'd say, well, bog water, that's one. But you'd say, well, no, that we got plenty of bog water. Well, that's what we live in, Scoots. That's just a fiction. That's a fictionalized, fictionalized swamp based treat from, you know, people that don't live in swamps or visit them. And I'd say, well, our goob, what about goo balls? And I say, oh, my grandma, that's a name, you know, that's a, that's a, you know, transferable name you could use anywhere. But yeah, my grandmother, she made the best goo balls. Okay, but you're an amphibian, so I really don't want to know any more about what's in the goo balls because this is a sleep podcast. Uh, but I can imagine that it's amphibious, amphibious a, tre- a treat so neat, uh, even the amphibians, uh, to an amphibian, it tastes sweet, goo balls. Uh, you know, when I was young, we, we would, well, anyway, uh, like, uh, it's time for, what am I... What in the name of goo balls am I talking about? I say, well, there's some up in my brain, I'm pretty sure. And if you're here and you're new, you're probably wondering, well, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here. Before we get on with the rest of the stuff, I just want to let you know you're important. This show is built on a foundation of empathy and compassion. That's why I'm here for you. That's, you know, for, for those of you the show helps, that's what makes it work. And really, I want you to have empathy and compassion for yourself and other people. But it always starts, you know, internally. And if you need some extra help right now, you know, kind of say, hey, do you, I need some, you, you talk to yourself like that. Hey, do you need some extra help right now? Well, there's links right in the show notes. So right in your podcast app, you could reach out to somebody right now and connect with them. And I want you to do that, okay? And then if you're in a place where you're, you're feeling a little bit more grounded, you say, well, I want to I want to, I want to, be a part of the solution. I want to be a part of positive change. I want to support the fact that black lives matter. I want you to support black mental health uh, and, and making it a priority, making mental health a priority for everybody. But right now, as we've seen, members of our community need our support. Uh, so I'm going to have links to organizations we could take action. You could put your money behind things. You could let your voice be heard. Or if you need some more support, there's going to be links to those resources all right in our show notes. Because I'm here for you. And, and you know, getting you a good night's sleep, maybe you could be there for you too. Or, and then if, you, if you're there for you, say, hey, I want to be here for the other people in my world too. So that's that. Uh, and now this is uh, the, some of the sponsors that enable me to bring you this show twice a week. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey everybody, it's uh, Scoots here, and I, I just wanted to make this quick. I'm trying to make these patron spots quick. If you listen to the show a lot, you know I'm here. You know I care. I care about it, taking your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep. You know, I've been working on the show since 2013, and I put a lot of work into the podcast, and I still put a lot of work in. If you value that work and you're in a position to do so, think about becoming a patron. But you should also think about becoming a patron if you listen to Sleep With Me a lot. Not only because... You say, well, I get a lot out of sleep with me. Let me give back. But we have some great benefits. Uh, you can connect with them through most podcast apps. You can get ad-free episodes. And those episodes don't have uh, any of the, 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 the jingles or anything that some people, a few people find those disruptive. You could get around those at $5 a month. There's no thank yous at the end because some people let me know those were disruptive. And well, I keep those in the free feed because it, like overall, the majority of people enjoy them. If you want to get around them, you could do that at $5 a month month. And if you listen a lot, like you want to listen to all intro episodes twice a month, an all night episode once a month, behind the scenes exclusive episodes and coming up uh, are behind the facts of the Great British Bake Off. If you want more Sleep With Me story only episodes, access to the old episodes, think about supporting the show at 10 or 20 bucks a month uh, and you can do any of that. If you're a rep, but only do it if you want, you can. If you can't do it, that's why I make sure, that's why I work so hard so this podcast podcast is free. You don't got to worry about it. There's nothing wrong. That's, you know, I work hard so you can listen to it for free. But if you're in a position to do so and you say, yeah, I want to, 
I want to support the show right now. You could do it, you know, and then go to sleep after. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. Sign up, support the show on Patreon. You could save a lot of money if you become an annual patron. It also just helps the show because we can count on that money. It also helps the podcast a lot. You get 12 months of patronage for the for 11 months, and we know that we don't have to worry about uh, credit cards not going through and stuff like that. So it's a huge help. It's a win-win. So if you're a rebel with a cause that gets a lot out of the show and you say, you know what, I'm wild enough to pay for a free podcast because I love it and I enjoy it and I feel like I'm a part of the show. I want to support it. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you to hear is where I pop my peas, uh, if you please. If, you, if, you, if you're if you not listening or you don't want to check it out now, go when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, you can find our sponsors at our, on our website, sleepwithmepodcast.com. But I want to thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. I want to thank Little Seal and Baby Bird who got their quip on. Oh, boy, when you support quip, let me know which flosser. Did you get the, the, the new flosser? Flosser or the pop-up floss? What flavor toothpaste? Uh, what color toothbrush? I want to know, man. Because, it, yeah, it just it just interesting to me. And I want to thank Kim, who supported Sweaty Betty. And Kim said she has a lot of experience with different tight companies and loves her Sweaty Bettys. So thank you, Little Seal, Baby Bird, and Kim for supporting Quip and Sweaty Betty. If you support a sponsor, tag them on uh, Instagram. Tag them on social media. Send them a message. Give them a call. Let them know their sponsorship is valuable to you. That's why you supported them because you found out about them through the show. And let me know about it and I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you're having a tough time right now, there's going to be links to organizations that you can reach out to uh, for support uh, right now. So go ahead and do that. And there's going to be links to organizations to, to, to show uh, your support for the rest of the community and their mental health. And to say Black Lives Matter, Black Mental Health Matters. And it's a priority. Uh, so there'll be links to organizations uh, to that in the show notes. And the third part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is uh, something I support. And I've been talking about Appearances, uh, the beautiful podcast by Sharon Mashihi. It is absolutely, it, it's just... <laughs> Uh, it, is it just something you connect with deeply emotionally? It's just one of those searing pieces of, of fiction that's rooted in, in, in so many relatable things. It has, a, it has a balance of joy and humor, you know, self-exploration, joy, humor, and then just stuff that it's, it's mind-blowing, mind-bending, mind-blowing. But I want to hear from you. Uh, start at the prologue, listen and let me know. You can find appearances in your podcast app of choice. Just uh, type in appearances. I'm not exactly how to, sure to spell that, so I don't want to embarrass, I'd rather embarrass myself by being honest. I think it starts with AP, a, appearance as is appearances. A P P P. Uh, so just search for it in your podcast app of choice right now. Hit subscribe. Start listening to it tomorrow. Uh, thanks everybody. And what do you say? Oh, oh, mystery bard. A lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley. And runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team write us down or on the website. I am the mystery bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie and Jennifer These are your narrators you Get support your Scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want at Sleep With Me and we're so proud that we could dance We're raising money for the Water Wheel Foundation And Scooter might get a perm Thanks, Mr. Bard uh, That's uh, like, uh, you could commission a song from Mr. Bard Song.JonathanMan.net And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, well welcome, this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep, we do it the bedtime story, 
All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, uh, the, you know, things you're thinking about, uh, feelings, so anything, you know, on your mind, anything you're experiencing emotionally or physical sensations that are coming up for you. Those are the big, those are what we call the big three, even though they cover way more. We don't actually, I don't even call it the big three. I just uh, thought of that right now. But those are three general areas, but there could be other stuff, you know, like, uh, but, you know, we haven't talked about it in a lot, while, but buzzing lights, uh, gently s sleeping partners, uh, sleeping with uh, a volume, uh, ducks, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, or geese. What if you lived in a high, here's a question that's never come up on the podcast before, but so we know, well, we don't know much, uh, but, uh, so we know that, uh, well, okay, we can establish some things as facts that I made general, generally known by Scooter that they could be facts. Bird, birds do migrate. I know that much. Uh, there's something called migratory bird patterns or something. or You know, they, they, they go in a general direction because they migrate from somewhere to somewhere else. And I know there's places where they count birds because it's like part of the, it's on the migratory, because I've been to a couple of places where there's bird counting going on. And even where I went to one last year where I wasn't there for the counting season, but I saw the way they even had signs up so that people could, anyway, that's about all I know. But I'm getting some, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. If you're new, I'm really going nowhere, but I'm slowly going there. So if we establish those things, that birds do have, not all, like this is, it could be an SAT question, but uh, some birds migrate. Some birds migrate together. Some birds or most birds make noise, uh, like cawing or, or like ge geese calling or goosing. This is an SAT question. Some birds are geese, but all geese are birds. Uh, Right, it, I mean, is a like uh, those are the questions that I could count on to get right. But I think you have to, and then that would, then would be a, a multiple choice question after that. But so okay, so we're there. We got those things. Okay, so then some birds that migrate that are birds that also make noise that travel together. Freak are frequent fly. They go over a flyover zone, correct? So some somewhere. There, at least it's possible that there's someone that lives in a home or a house or a building, a domicile, could be an apartment, could be something else, where the birds fly over a lot. Uh, and that could be something, you, there could be a Sleep With Me listener who, like, what I'm saying is that could be a very specific usage of Sleep With Me. Where you say, yes, Scoots, I only listen during migration season, which is uh, whatever, seasonally. I mean, I do, we do have a lot of seasonal listeners, but you say, because those geese uh, or whatever, they could be whatever. I don't think crows migrate, but let's just say crows are a noisy bird. No offense. Some crows are noisy. You're right. Some crows. But can you imagine if crows were migrating over your house, particularly if they had tree, like your tree was like where they took, they say, okay, let's, okay, kids, we're going to pull into this tree here and uh, stay within four or five branches. We get out your snack and uh, you could talk to the other kids, you know, be sure to use the air, you know, restroom and make a lot, you know, get it out of your system, make a lot of noise, you know, because only, uh, the only kind of bird calling we're going to be doing while we're up, uh, up, some part of my brain just broke in with breaking news for me. Birds are migrating to make other birds, so they probably wouldn't be migrating with their family. And they'd say, well, thanks, for the, you really ruined that analogy, brain. Oh, I forgot, speaking of analogies, I'm supposed to be talking to the new listener. Well, whatever scheme you wake, I'm here to take your mind off of that. Believe it or not, I think that I did. I mean, that's a nice image to, to uh, accept if you're the person that lives in the house. Uh, but let's uh, pretend it's a tree far, far away where uh, even a, a bird, a bunch of birds on break uh, 
you know, kind of like they pull, you pull off the interstate and you go and there's picnic tables and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so where was I? Okay. So whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to take your mind off of that. What I'm going to do, what I propose to do is create a nice place, just like this bird zone or a nice, uh, rest stop, uh, where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake and, and uh, I'll take your mind off. It's a safe place. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to pat it. I'm going to rub it down. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Creaky like that tree that the birds are in. If the birds weren't there, you can't hear it creaking now because the birds are all talking and chat. You know, getting out of, like they said, we got another 48 days in this, uh, whatever, thermal, this jet stream. So, you know, make sure to get out of your system because we went, by the way, Junior, we're not stopping for another uh, Ford. I don't know how long birds go for. You know, I know so little, but honestly, I find you fascinating. Holy cow. Someone once said that you're related to dinosaurs. And I mean, I I think, uh, I don't know if that was Malcolm Gladwell or the other one uh, that's on the, in the movies, but uh, I don't know. That he, he may, doesn't Malcolm Gladwell usually has a one word birds? Uh, the amazing science within our brain, bird brain. Bird brain comes up on this podcast a lot. The science and facts behind bird brains and how it can unlock uh, our relationship with one another. Probably not. You're right. Well, at least, you know, who would have thought? I don't know if Malcolm Gladwell ever dreamed of uh, this day that has come multiple times. Well, you'd say, is there any genre of books that doesn't have fan fiction? Well, not, you have nonfiction books. Well, not anymore. I solved that. Uh, I, I wrote the first, uh, I intended, you're right, I intended to write the first, uh, of many books of, of um, fan fiction based on uh, Malcolm Gladwell's books. And I call it Sleep with the first book I called was an intro where I was supposed to be introducing a sleep podcast. And then I talked about birds for a while. It was about bird family migrating together. They were rebels. Uh, everybody said, you're supposed to go down there to make kids, not bring your kids on this trip. Uh, and they said, why don't you mind your own bird's wax? Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're part of this, uh, we're part of this flock, uh, and we're just trying to eat our snacks here. So please just go keep your branches. Uh, our family migrates together. And they said, okay, well, listen, can I just ask you a question in private? Like, uh, what are you going to do with your kids when you get down there? Because, you know, that's when nature takes hold, if you know what I'm saying. You see, we're birds. The process really isn't as glamorous as a, as a person that writes Malcolm Gladwell fiction would hold in their mind. Anyway, he should just move on. You're right. I should. Right away. Okay, so whatever's keeping me awake. Oh, I'm going to send my voice across the deep dark night. Lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders. I think we've been on like a 12-minute pointless meander superfluous tangents, all those things to keep you company while you fall asleep. That's basically the, uh, the show in a nutshell <laughs> by not in a nutshell. Yes. Uh, so a couple of things to know, like usually I don't go off the topic that much that early though. I mean, only like 40, 90, 40 to 90% of the time. But some things to note, this podcast does take getting used to. Most listeners that are regular listeners say it takes two or three tries uh, to get used to it. So if you're skeptical or doubtful or very confused, I mean, listen to, I can understand that, particularly tonight. Uh, but you may also be, well, I can picture that bird family in the tree. It's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice, okay image. Not particularly striking. Obviously, there's a lot of scientific uh, mistakes in there, uh, but it's pleasant. I can see them passing around sandwiches or whatever that they, I don't know where a bird would put their, 
stuff. They, you know, they would probably, in reality, do some gathering or something. I don't know. But just in this image, they have a picnic basket full of sandwiches. And, yeah, the ability. They have a po Also, yes, they do have opposable thumbs within my mind. Okay, so whatever's keeping you awake, oh, give the show a few tries and just see how it goes because it's very different. Some of the things that are different about it, believe it or not, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. I, you may have already figured that out. You just kind of barely listen because uh, it comes with a lot of nonsense and goofy stuff, but really that's here to keep you company while you fall asleep. This podcast also doesn't put you to sleep. It just keeps you company as you drift off. That's why I'm here about an hour to give you plenty of time. Or if you can't sleep and you need company or you wake up and you need company or it's during the day and you need company, I'll be here. I'm here to the very end of the episode. So there's that. Uh, so those are two things to know. A couple other things to know that can throw new listeners off. The structure of the show. show starts off with a greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. And then this episode, Swamp Based Beings or Bird and Bird Families. Uh, and then there's business. That's how we keep the show out twice a week uh, is uh, the business uh, versus a paywall or something like that. Then there's an intro. Now, the intro really throws new people off, even some regular listeners. I just read a review of someone that said the whole 30% of the or 30 minutes of the show is ads, which just isn't accurate, but... Yeah, there's ads at the beginning. Then there's an intro that's about 20 minutes, uh, and it, it can. It's 20 minutes of me, in some sense, getting warmed up and not getting to the point. But that's kind of the point of the show. Uh, so for a regular listener, the intro provides you a way to get some distance from the day and gives you like a built-in. Uh, part of your bedtime routine that you can kind of adjust your bedtime routine in the show to like you can start listening before you get into bed as you're getting ready or whatever you're doing to wind down or if you say well the podcast is my wind down the intro is there to wind you down and uh, give you ease you into sleep i don't have a way personally and most of the listeners of like just falling asleep, like closing your eyes and falling asleep for us, that's just not an option. So this podcast gives you something to kind of barely listen to, whether your eyes are open and you're knitting or they're closed and you're just getting comfortable or you're brushing your teeth, whatever it is. Uh, and yet yeah, 2% of listeners skip ahead to 20 minutes and just get, they start the show there and they go on. So that's the intro. And yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to new listeners or some people. You just say, when they, like, so you spend 20 minutes talking about nothing? And it's, yeah, it's a pretty poor, you're right. And it's a pretty important part of the show. I mean, I talk about something, in this case, uh, like the, the one person that's out there or multiple people out there that are living in high bird zones. You know, that they just have never been, this is the time. Finally, in one intro, I'm able to glamour, give some Hollywood glamour to people that live in HBZs, high bird zones, or HBT, high bird traffic zones, HBTZs, uh, or HB, you know, high bird, F, F, FBMs, uh, frequent bird, FBMZs, uh, frequent bird migration zones. So all of those people are getting glamorized. And then the other people out there writing Malcolm Gladwell fan fiction, especially, fan, you know, romance or whatever. You know, the day I fell in love, uh, throwing a rock through a window. Uh, and I learned, you know, whatever it is, you, like, uh, the, you know, somebody out there could be writing that. And they say, finally, finally, I get glamorized on a sleep podcast. Or maybe there's like an even deeper form of fan fiction where there's a fictional Malcolm Gladwell who goes home and they say, Malcolm, I heard I heard you got uh, some people have been writing fomance about your stuff. Finally, you've made it. Uh, there's a spot at our dinner table for you once again that we can, that we, you know, your mother's dream has finally come true. One day there'll be blaze. Maybe there'll be a tingler about uh, 
you know, a fictionalized character based on your, you know, hard research and hard work. Uh, so it's just ridiculous. I'm only laughing at my own ridiculousness. So, oh, so that's the intro. Oh, yeah, the intro. The, the, it just goes on and on and on. I can't help myself, I guess. Uh, then after the intro is business, that's just how podcast structure works, and it's an essential to keeping the show free. Then after the business is a story. Tonight it'll be our ongoing episodically modular series, Otter Things, that you can listen to in any order. Uh, every episode before this would just be a prequel if you're listening to this episode first. Uh, so then, and then there's thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. That's the kind of, the only other thing you need to know is like, I make this show because I've been there tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep, bothered by birds. I mean, that's true. Like, uh, there's been many, many times I said, what in the heck is with those joyful bird sounds? They're really getting on my nerves. Uh, and it may have even used stronger language than that. And uh, so I've been there. So that's one part of it. I want to help because I've been there. But the other side of it is you. You deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place of solace. And if I can provide that for you, it would be my honor. So I guess, like, that's really why I make the show. If you can get some rest via this podcast, uh, I- I'd be happy. Now, knowing that, if you're new, give it a few tries because it doesn't work for everybody, particularly right away. So just see how it goes. And then in the end, I wish it did work for everyone, but some people just don't like the show or it just isn't effective for them because it is so different. But that actually is what ends up making it actually work uh, for the people it works for. It's like, oh, this sh- like, uh, yeah, would it never, like, it, I, I'm, I'm, I thought I was the only person that thought about this kind of stuff. But finally someone, like I said, glamorizes it for me. They said, I thought I was the only one with uh, a bare grasp of birds. <laughs> but I really like them anyway. Like, uh, the old, I thought I was the only one that believed in the half science of birds. Uh, but finally... There's someone who puts, you know, puts, you know, puts it out in the public sphere. So anyway, the main message I want to get to you is I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate your time. I really hope I can help you get to sleep. I work really hard on the show. You're in a nice drive. Uh, so thank you again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this podcast to twice a week. Uh, hey everybody, it's uh, Scoots here, and I, I just wanted to make this quick. I'm trying to make these patron spots quick. If you listen to the show a lot, you know I'm here. You know I care. I care about uh, taking your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep. You know, I've been working on the show since 2013, and I put a lot of work into the podcast, and I still put a lot of work in. If you value that work and you're in a position to do so, think about becoming a patron. But you should also think about becoming a patron if you listen to Sleep With Me a lot, not only because you say, well, I get a lot out of sleep with me. Let me give back. But we have some great benefits. Uh, you can connect with them through most podcast apps. You can get ad-free episodes. And those episodes don't have uh, any of the, 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 the jingles or anything that some people, a few people find those disruptive. You could get around those at $5 a month. There's no thank yous at the end because some people let me know those were disruptive. And well, I keep those in the free feed because it, like overall, the majority of people enjoy them. If you want to get around them, you could do that at $5 a a month. And if you listen a lot, like you want to listen to all intro episodes twice a month, an all night episode once a month, behind the scenes exclusive episodes, and coming up uh, are behind the facts of the Great British Bake Off. If you want more Sleep With Me story only episodes, access to the old episodes, think about supporting the show at 10 or 20 bucks a month. Uh, and you can do any of that. If you're a rep, but only do it if you want, you can. If you can't do it, that's why I make sure, that's why I work so hard so this podcast podcast is free. You don't got to worry about it. There's nothing wrong. That's, you know, I work hard so you can listen to it for free. But if you're in a position to do so and you say, yeah, I want to, I want to support the show right now. You could do it, you know, and then go to sleep after. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. Sign up, support the show on Patreon. You could save a lot of money if you become an annual patron. It also just helps the show because we can count on that money. It also helps the podcast a lot. You get 12 months of patronage for the for 11 months, and we know that we don't have to worry about uh, credit cards not going through and stuff like that. So it's a huge help. It's a win-win. So if you're a rebel with a cause that gets a lot out of the show and you say, you know what, I'm 
wild enough uh, to pay for a free podcast because I love it and I enjoy it. And I feel like I'm a part of the show. I want to support it. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks. All right, everybody, it's time for our episodically modular, serialized, uh, barely serialized series, uh, Otter Things. This is the last uh, fictional episode, then we'll have a recap episode. Uh, So I'm going to turn things over. I think, oh, episodically modular means you can listen to it in any order. So if this is your first episode, don't worry, we'll try to get you caught up on everything. And then you could listen to it. And if you've never listened, you say, well, I don't watch that show. This is a bedtime story. Don't worry about it at all. It's made to help you fall asleep and keep you company. And before I get started, I just want to introduce things with our Hollywood uh, famous uh, introducer. Uh, The most famous person in our town, uh, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, Thank you, Emma. As the ladies, as gentlemen, as the boys, the girls, the friends beyond the binary, it's time to journey to a place beyond the swamp. It's time for other things. Splish, splash. Ah, uh, thanks, Antonio. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Miss Emma Otter, and uh, she'll she'll take it from here. Hey, everybody, this is Emma Otter here. I'm your host. Uh, Welcome to our story called Otter Things. It's a tale of a place beyond the swamp where I, Emma Otter, and my friends live and my family. And a place where a lot of odd things have happened to those of us otters, beavers, muskrats, uh, porcupines, and more. So I'm Emma, I'm in middle school, and I have uh, some very good friends. Some some of my best friends are named Vaughn, LJ, uh, Willow, and Billy. And once upon a time when our life was a little bit, it was odd, but a little bit more, uh, you know, less needed to be shared with the world... Uh, we played a game called Bards of Big Bunnies. This was before we met our friend uh, Billy. It's a, a, a like a, a role playing adventure game. You play dice in your imagination. And one night after playing, uh, all our my friends headed home, but Willow took a path less taken, and she was kind of led on a goose chase. Uh, uh, through the swamp and then into a strange another world by being, I, uh, presumably at this point we know from another world, uh, it, who was a goose, two-headed goose, bu- or I guess technically three heads, uh, or a goose bunny, like let's just say that, a bunny and a goose, uh, that uh, may, probably from another universe or impact, I don't know, like that lived under other, uh, under the swamp, but also kind of on a b- b- plane between our world and another world. Uh, kind of complicated to explain. And there the goose bunny took Willow and also her sister's friend, Babs, uh, and, and treated them like t- t- toy babies in a kind way, took good care of them. But the thing was that because it was somewhere beneath the swamp, that was also in another world. Eventually, because Babs uh, drifted into the other world, and like uh, all that remained behind was a doll. And the same thing happened to Willow. And we, but, but you know, during this time, we didn't know where Willow was. We were looking for. That's where we met Billy, a platypus. Uh, we'll get into, I guess, quickly, but don't worry, all will be well, I always tell you. Eventually, while we used Billy to find where Willow was, Willow's mom, Francis, and the head of our community resources department, uh, Bull, the bullfrog, uh, Leon, or the bull, he, Leon or Bull, he goes by, he is a bullfrog. Probably you have to be a pretty cool bullfrog to be known as Bull, uh, but they eventually found Willow, brought her back. So all is well with Willow. Now, meanwhile, so Billy lived in a place underneath a, a place on the other side of the swamp uh, known as the Visitor Center. 
and she she has powers that uh, she can use the power of song to make things happen. For you'll see in this episode, but for example, if she said, uh, I don't know, uh, the stars at night are big and bright. The stars would, might get brighter, at least to you, as she was singing it. And so we worked with her. We found that's how we found where Willow was, so that her mom and uh, Leon could find her. But the people that ran the visitor center underneath the swamp, they had been kind of using uh, Billy's uh, superpowers or uh, magic powers, however you want to describe it, uh, as part of some sort of uh, pseudoscience. Uh, larger community resource uh, thing uh like they it was a lab i guess and it was run by a uh, fox named dr max modine and dr max was not ready to let uh billy go and so while everybody was out or, or the adults were looking for willow we were uh, waiting for them to return with Will, and we found out that, oh, no, the uh, Dr. Max and his uh, team of weasels, uh, paramilitary, I would say, had tracked us down. So we were hiding in a, a set of lockers. Uh, we'd fallen asleep, and we were hiding for them as they were searching for us. And I guess that's, like, where we'll start. I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else you need to know. I mean, I guess not. Like, they started, so they started, like, uh, searching for us, and eventually, like, we weren't actually hiding in the lockers. We were hiding in a hallway behind, a secret hallway behind the lockers where, presumably, the school, this was at the high school, not our school, but where the school could just look in people's lockers without unlocking them or them even knowing it, uh, and Dr. Max and everybody, they'd searched the whole school. They still couldn't find us, but they knew we were there. And then one of the weasels was walking up and down the hall, and he said, Hey, look at this here. So here's a love note sticking out of this locker here. Hardy har har. And he started reading the love note, which said, like, Dear Sweetie Poo, your fur is like... The, you know, something like that. Like when, when the moonlight on the breeze in the trees, uh, he was reading it in that weasel. It has a moon in the trees, you know. But Dr. Max said, stop, what? what? And he said, it's a love note. Uh, what, what do you mean, what? Uh, yeah, it smells like uh, almonds. Uh, and Dr. Max said, did you say it was sticking out of a locker? And then all everybody paused and realized, oh, wait a second, the lockers. And we were behind the lockers, but then we still were, like, trembling, you know, as they started opening the lockers uh, and uh, throwing stuff out of the lockers. Uh, and they'd say, clear, this locker's empty, clear. And some of the lockers were very neat, and some of them, you know, you could hear them, and then you could see, well, oh, there's, like, uh, snacks in here and stuff. Uh and it was tight back where we were. We were all kind of pressed together. Like I said, at first it was dreamy and nice, and now it kind of felt uh, hot and sweaty. But I didn't really mind being scrunched up next to Billy. It made me really feel all as well. And then Vaughn and LJ were on the other side. But then, once again, an accidental weasel uncover, he said, one of the weasels was looking in a mirror in, that was, like, to the back of the locker. And I think maybe this was one of these weasels that had, like, a twin brother or best friend that worked for Dr. Max. He said, what are you doing? I said, hey, look at this. It says, uh, it says like, it had a joke on the mirror. I don't know which one, uh. Like, even though it's Monday, you look like a Friday or something. And I said, no, you don't. And it went to uh, hit the little mirror in the back of the locker. And it missed, and it hit the wall, and it was empty. And again, Dr. Max said, what ha What was that? And uh, there was nothing, boss, nothing over here. We're just uh, searching these lockers. And Dr. Max walked over. And the weasel said, it's a mirror. It has a magnet. It sticks to the back of the locker. You look great, Dr. Max. And Dr. Max tapped the back of the locker and heard a hollow sound. Uh, 
And then you could hear them motioning, right? Uh, and there's a famous movie uh, called Hard to Can't Throw Roll the Dice. Uh, no, die, like Hard to Roll the Die. And it had a scene like this, but the uh, hero, the heroine, uh, she was in an um, air conditioning duct, uh, which I don't know what that is, but it was in the movie. Something they have in cities, I guess, big cities. And they were pressing on it. So they started pressing on the things, and Dr. Max just knew this is where we were. And they were tapping on the lockers, waiting for something that wouldn't be the hollow sound. And they were getting closer and closer to us. And I heard Dr. Max say, let's find the exits of these things. So we kind of knew we were caught uh, as uh, they started uh, pushing in. And then one pushed in right where I was, right into my, like, uh, almost touching my chest, uh, and, of course, it made a different sound because it wasn't as hollow because I was standing there. And then we heard the shuffling of weasel feet as they kind of got filled the hall or weasel paws or whatever. And then they pressed in on Vaughn's and it didn't made it less of a hollow sound. And then LJ's and then after LJ made a hollow sound. And they went back to me and then to where Billy was and then after Billy. So they knew exactly where they were. And we were there kind of in the darkness. And then Dr. Max cleared his throat and he said, Billy, I know you're in there. I know all you are in there. Just come out and uh, we could go home. Your friends could go to their homes and everyone will be well. But you could also hear something else, which was the weasels uh, getting ready. Uh, and I said, wait a second. Well, that doesn't, the weasels, you could almost hear their muscles moving and, and their nails like clicking in the floor of the hall. It was almost like a creak and a click. So we knew he wasn't totally telling the truth. Uh, and then Dr. Max he cleared his throat again. He said, Billy, don't make me start counting down uh, for consequences. And then there was another pause, and Billy swallowed and looked at me. And then Dr. Max started counting down, uh, you know, five, uh, four. But then I heard, and I didn't even hear it. I felt another sound deep within Billy, this uh, vibration that kind of started to grow behind the lockers, and I could feel it in my chest uh, and my nostrils and even my teeth uh, as it moved outward. And it was the song Strike It Up uh, that she began to sing, and then everything in the lockers and the floors and even the lockers themselves uh, lifted up and, and flew and started flying around and dancing around Dr. Max and the weasels. And all the lockers that were closed burst open and stuff started flying out of them. Uh, and right in that confusion, uh, we ran. Uh, and uh, like through a storm of papers, the four of us holding hands, uh, wrappers and snacks. And of course, Vaughn wanted to stop and he even opened his mouth and caught some, what is that called? Uh, fiddle faddle in his mouth. And then he said, then he caught a, bu he said, fiddle faddle and bugles together to taste that nobody wants to taste. Uh, and then we said, where should we go? And then we ran into the room where, where the school uh, has in-school suspensions right around the corner. And I said, this is a good place to hide because I heard Tefe say that once they uh, put you in here, they forget all about you. Uh, and they probably already looked in here because it was like in the principal's office, but in the back of the principal's office, like these little mini places uh, and they said, Tefe said, they can't even hold me. The school, you know, you can't hold Tefe down, a good otter down, uh, even in, in school suspension. And we ran in there, past the nurse's office, past the principal's office, uh, and uh, past, you know, that printing machine that prints in purple. 
I don't know what that was called. Uh, it smells like uh, weird. And then when we ran in, it was just a hall with a bunch of rooms and a bunch of doors. And we immediately realized, wait, these are just like little study rooms. So there's no exit here. And we started searching for a place to hide. There was like a desk facing all of it uh, where I guess some monitor would keep an eye on the kids that were in in-school suspension. A lot of dust. Uh, we knew it would only be a second until the weasels got there. So we were trying to look for anything we could use. Uh, and Vaughn jumped up on the desk and knocked over this big box. And out of it tumbled a bunch of these cones that said... Uh, I, I said, do, sa, do, 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 do say? Is this like some sort of French class thing? Do, dune. It's like a, maybe it's for a do, that Dune. Remember that book, Dune? Is that, I thought it was called Dune. And then L, LJ said, don't you know that's dunce? It's like an insulting term for troublemakers that authority figures use. It's, it's not appropriate and kind. And just like your brother Tefe, he's probably been called a dunce before. And we said, well, we, we got to hide. Uh, can we use these? And then uh, Vaughn said, like, is a dunce like a jester? And LJ said, yeah, kind of, kind of. Uh, these cones, you got to wear them on your heads. And then we said, well, what if we point them out in the door? So we started stacking them with the points out in the doorway. And Vaughn said, you can use your mind to shoot them out at the uh, the weasels when they come. And we filled the whole doorway with cones. Uh, from the outside, it must have looked like some sort of, uh, I don't know, in the inside, it was just circle, you know, paper circles. So as, but as we were stacking the cones, the weasels came and we said, we, Vaughn said, sing a song like rock. Can you sing one of the rock, famous rocket songs by Bowie or Elton? And Billy just kind of stared at him. Uh, and, uh, she said, is, is a jester and a fool the same thing? Like in, uh, William Turtle Spear. Because Dr. Max used to read me to William Turtle Spear. And I said, yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. And she said, okay. And the weasels gathered outside and they said, nah, your doctor's not here right now. Uh, so we're going to soften you up. But Va Vaughn wasn't listening either. He said, get ready for a countdown to Major Tom. And then LJ said, Major Tong. And then they just said, anyway, five, four, three, two, one. And then nothing happened, and we were waiting. And we looked back at Billy, but she was already singing. But it wasn't a, a, a space. It was like a sad, sweet song uh, with a little bit of fun. It wasn't rocket-like at all. But then the weasels started pulling the dunce caps out and walking in the room and putting them on their heads. Uh, and uh, we were like, Billy, what's happening? And... and uh, she, then she started singing, because first she sings uh, throats, uh, uh, but then they started dancing, and they realized the song she was singing was Everybody Plays the Fool. And they started dancing like marionettes, uh, doing some sort of foolish, uh, silly dance. And uh, they started singing along with Billy, and eventually they just went into the different study rooms and sat down like marionettes, exhausted. And uh, then Billy said, don't come out. Like, you're all in big trouble. Like, she was a teacher. And they kind of were like, they, they, they like, uh, like they were, like they were students or something. And they all kind of put their heads down on their desks. And she said, yeah, put your heads down and don't come out until we tell you to. Uh, and then we locked all the, and they said, wait a second, you can, these study rooms have, and we locked the doors and all, like, uh. There's a good portion of weasels we locked in those study rooms. But then I was thinking about the lyrics. I said, well, this is not the lyrics to the song. And I said, oh, well, I guess it's like a Billy's Powers. But whatever it was, it worked. And we poked our heads in the hallway, and the hall was clear, and we started running again. And then we were trying to figure out how we could sneak out of the school. And uh, LJ said, well, what about... Uh, like, uh, the, like, I think there's like, when we were in the science lab, 
He goes, he goes, isn't there the uh, underground compost? Uh, he goes, isn't that part of the science lab? And we said, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe we could sneak in there. As you said, oh, yeah, that'll, that'll like, get out in there. And he said, yeah, there's an aeration tank in the middle of the uh, sports ball field. So we ran down the hall, and then we got to the science lab door. And as we did, right around both corners came Dr. Max and a bunch of weasels on both sides of us. And as soon as we stopped, oh, Billy fell to her knees and, and closed her eyes and, and uh, leaned against me like she needed a nap, like she was tired out from all of her singing and using her powers. And uh, I said, get the door open. We got to get in here and lock the door for the Ma Dr. Max because they were still running towards us, you know. But they got there. And... Uh, I think we had a little bit of time. Again, my memory is just uh, like, uh, but then Dr. Max said uh, in this very flat voice, uh, Billy, can you hear me? It's your papa here, Billy. Uh, it's time to take you home. And then he said, and you three need to step aside and let an adult handle things. You've caused enough, enough trouble for everyone here. It's time for me to fix things and take Billy home with us, so just to step aside. Because I'm more than willing to count down. And I said, no. And then Vaughn said, no. And then LJ said, no. And I said, we'll take any consequences you got, uh, Fox Face. Uh, go ahead and count us down. We're ready for you. And then LJ said, yeah, count us down. And Vaughn said, yeah, count us down. And Dr. Max said, I was hoping you'd say that, uh, weasels, let's start count, let's count on five, uh, four. And then I said, we're not worried at all because Billy transferred at three. She transferred her power to us, uh, so I'm sorry to say to you and your weasels, uh, you're going to be very, very, very sorry. And I kind of started to make this noise like I was holding a note or warming my voice up. And I held up a finger to my ear like uh, I'd seen in a music video one time. And then LJC, yep, don't make us sing you into non-existence. Uh, and uh, then uh, Vaughn made a squeaky sound like his voice was cracking. He said, have you ever seen what an off key magical song does to a weasel and looked at all the weasels and they had all paused. And uh, Dr. Max even uh, paused for a second. Then Dr. Max said, don't worry about it. They're bluffing too. And then I said, okay. Uh huh. And I started to clear my thought the voice. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't know we were bluffing, but I thought uh, maybe we could get Billy's powers. Uh, and the weasel seemed to believe it. And I said, Vaughn, can you drop a beat on us? Uh, and he goes, bop, 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 bop. Uh, and then I, 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 I said, uh, and then LJ said, give me the music. Uh, and then I realized it because we, and we just started to dance in sync. First, we put our left foot, like our left foot, we step forward, left over right, right over left, uh, arms down, leaning forward, two hops back, uh, hop on your right leg, a 360 degree spin. We kick, you, you, they kick your thumb back, uh, like you're telling, and, and we were singing this song. Uh, and the weasels and Dr. Max, they were just stunned because it, they, what they did, it was so flawless and natural. Because, but that was because we had, her, 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 uh, that's because we had rehearsed this so many times. Uh, for this talent show, we were going to enter because it's a song, uh, Everybody Dance Now. And we were going to do it, uh, we were going to do it in, as, we were going to do it as like characters we were studying in our literature class for, and then we just, so we practiced it all. Uh, but then, like we said, wait a second, we'll be the only ones that enjoy this. Uh, 
So we just did it for ourselves in the end. We just got nervous. We didn't enter the talent show, but we knew the dance back and forth. Uh, but I'd forgotten about it because it had been a couple of years. And then I started singing, going to make you sweat till you cheese. Uh, is that gross enough? Indeed. And then uh, Vaughn and LJ said, you know, going to make you sweat, baby. Let the rhythm move you. It was a whole thing. Uh, and uh, everybody, their jaws were just wild. Uh, but I was like full of confidence. I was staring at Dr. Max and the weasels because, again, they were like, there's no way they could be just dancing like this uh, just on their own. Uh, uh, maybe Billy was still, like, I think in the back of their minds, even Dr. Max thought maybe Billy was actually using her powers with her eyes closed or something. But then Dr. Max shook his head and said, no, 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 three, two, and then as he got to two, the whole building shook. Uh, and that's when everybody stopped, even us. Uh, and then it shook again. And we heard this click, click, clicking. And then it shook uh, again. And then coming, running down the hall, we heard the actually the pitter-patter of little feet. Uh, and then an Andy Ruxpin ran down the hall underneath all the weasel's legs, slid with style right up to us, uh, and then popped back up and looked at us. Uh, and Vaughn jumped and squealed because he thought it was a bug, uh, but it was really just an Andy Ruxpin. And uh, Andy Ruxpin said, nice moves, Willow. That's really good. Winkity wink. Uh, and uh, we said, why, we, were, we were stunned. Everybody was stunned. And then the Adi Ruxman said, I'd duck into that lab right now. And then everything shook again. And as we grabbed the door to the lab, uh, bursting like through the walls and the ceiling was the giant uh, goose bunny. And it was uh, hopping down the hall. It looked very unhappy. And then I really said, uh, uh, the Adi Ruxpin was shaking off all sorts of carrot and peanut butter, and we closed the door. But uh, what I know now is the bunny went down the hall and was grabbing weasels with its ears and its goose heads and, dan you know, kissing them very strongly. And they were all trying to stop it, and it was hopping, and uh, it hopped on Dr. Max to give him an extra hug and kiss. Uh, and Adi Ruxman held on to Dr. Max, uh, uh, and then the goose bunnies tried to lick Dr. Max and all the uh, carrot shreds and um, peanut butter or whatever. And meanwhile, we closed the door of the lab and, and locked it, uh, but it, 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 it was like hoping that the bunny would just go away or something. And then we put Billy down, and we tried to like uh, give her some water. And we heard the weasels, like, you know, trying to get out of the way of the bunny and saying, I'm not a carrot, stop licking me, uh, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, and then we heard the bunny kind of uh, saying, go to sleep and sing some of them to sleep. Uh, and then it was quiet, and we said, okay, that's good, the bunny's good. And then, of course, no, 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 the bunny uh, doors ripped it. The bunnies it used its ears like arms and ripped a floppy ear to the door right off its hinges. And uh, LJ said, grab some beakers and a Bunsen burner. We'll stop this thing. And we said, but we got to hook it up to a hose and then find the teacher should keep it, everything. So we were throwing beakers and uh, test tubes at it. And Vaughn was trying to hook up a Bunsen burner, uh, uh, but then it was just kind of deflecting everything with its ears and its goose heads, but it also didn't seem to like, obviously, having that stuff thrown at it. And, uh, again, Vaughn was trying to say, get, get this thing up, uh, and then Vaughn stood up and just bluffed like it had a bun he had a Bunsen burner, and the bunny took its ears and picked Vaughn up and, uh, had him gently rested, laid him on the ground so he would rest uh, and not get in the way. And then LJ came and uh, 
just 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 kind of, kind of dove on the bunny, uh, which didn't work, and it gently placed LJ to the side uh, so he could rest and without help, being able to help anymore. And then I stood in front of it and I said, no, and oh, leave us alone. We're just kids. Uh, you already bothered our friend Willow and we're not toys. We're not carrots. Go home and leave us alone. And then one of the gooseheads kind of stared at me and then kind of coughed and then spat out, uh, an Adi Ruxpin, different part, Adi Ruxpin parts. And, uh, I said, gross. Uh, and I said, you know what? I don't think you want this. And I don't think you really, uh, I don't believe you're really here. Uh, but it's, uh, it did, it didn't, it didn't seem to say, like, it wasn't listening to me. And they said, we play this game called Bards and Big Bunnies. And sometimes there's uh, beings that are just acting on instinct. Are you sure you're not acting on instinct? Uh, and something about that word instinct, I think, made it perk its ears up or something. I said, do you just want one of us as a toy? You tried to take a Willow, and now you're going to try to take Billy? I'll go with you. Me. And I, I said, me. And it looked at me. And I said, I'll come with you if you leave all them alone, all my friends alone, and leave. And I said, do you understand? Uh, and uh, it, it nodded. And I said, okay, let's. I'll go with you then. Just leave them alone. And it kind of stared at uh, Billy for a while because I think it had some connection to Billy. But I said, I'll go with you. I, I'm the most, uh, like, look at me. I'm, I'll, I'll make a great toy. Googly, googly, goo. And I said, you could even wrap me up. And then it, like, uh, st pulled out a, a goose thing, went into its bunny fur and pulled out a swaddling blanket. And LJ even said, no, like, but LJ was so tired and rested that uh said, no, we'll, 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 Emma, no. And I said, yeah, I'll go with you and uh, I'll go to your bunny world, uh, just don't be rough with anybody else here in our world, okay? Let's just go back to your world in the tracing paper tower or wherever it is you live. Uh, and I'll be your big baby if that's really what you want. Uh, and then one of the bunnies, one of the bunnies, Goosehead, started to kind of pat down my head. Uh, and then it started to kind of start to swaddle me in this swaddling blanket. And you know what? I wasn't really worried because, uh, I did realize the big bunny stuff and me, I wasn't being a method actor, uh, but I guess I was in an adventure and I said, well, this is what it's going to take. Uh, all will be well. I'll figure this out. Uh. And because some people said it was so courageous and so brave and that, I, you know, that uh, they could have made a, a series just about me and, and what I was willing to do and not about all my friends and everything they did. But I said it wasn't brave. It was just what needed to be done at the time. And I knew it was going to work out. I didn't know how, but I had some confidence. And I said I could probably live with a bunny. I mean, I didn't want to, but. It was a choice. I didn't want the bunny to uh, deal with my friends in, in a non-polite way or my new friend, uh, Billy. Uh, so it started to swaddle me, and uh, I said, okay. And then it started to sing to me. And I said, okay. And I started to kind of start to feel strange because uh, I was, well, first of all, I was swaddled in a full-size uh it hadn't been swaddled in, like, whatever, 10 to 11, 12 years. And I felt like it was singing me a lullaby, but I was, like, getting transported, like, into that dreamy place you go when you're asleep. Uh, but it was different. I could see a world that wasn't our world. Uh, but I was like, okay, here I go. And I felt myself fading and, and turning into a doll. It was weird, uh, I'll say. 
And then I heard something move uh, behind the bunny, and then I heard Billy's voice say, No, uh, stop, uh, this stops here. And uh, the, the, like I see the bunny stopped singing, and then I saw Billy standing, and the bunny turned and looked at Billy, and it made kind of like a like a geese hiss or whatever. Billy said, "It's time for you to go home, and it's time for us to wrap this up and unwrap my friend." And I said, "Oh, wait a second! Uh, Billy's gonna sing a song." And Billy kind of made a look at me, like, uh, to, to use my teeth to unwrap the tie. And I did. I pulled the, I started to de-swaddle myself. I guess because, I, you know, I'm not a little baby. I could pull the swaddle out with my teeth. And I thought, this is awesome because I could tell Billy was starting to sing. I didn't know what it was about. Uh, and I said, oh, great, Billy's going to save me. She's going to deal with this bunny and send it home, and everything's going to be well. Just how I wanted it to turn out, just like before, I was willing to do something. But now, you know, I didn't see it as a related, but I said, well, now things are going to work out great, and then Billy can live with us or whatever, and all will be well. But we know that sometimes all will be well and not in the way we expect, you know, because uh, uh, we just, uh, you know, it doesn't all, it, sometimes all will be well means you, you say, oh, it was unexpected. This isn't how I would have said all will be well, but it is how all will be well. And Billy said, throw me the blanket. And I threw Billy the blanket. And then she started running around the goose and swaddling it. Uh, and she said, it's time for you to go home now. And she started singing a song from a distance, like from a distance, the world looks blue and green and snow-capped to swamps uh, or something. You know, from a distance, there's harmony. And it echoes through the land, a voice of hope and peace uh, through every swamp-based being. And she swaddled, and then she held the, she swaddled the goose bunny, not just in her swaddling blanket, but in her arms. Uh, and she was singing to the bunny, and she said, I'm going to take you home to your world where you belong. And I said, and then you'll be back. Uh, and she looked right at me, and, you know, tears rolled down her eyes, uh, and I said, oh, dear, I guess that means no. And she said, goodbye, Emma. Goodbye, my better than best friend. And I could only say goodbye. I could not I could only say it with my mouth and not my voice. Uh, and she kept singing, and they started to fade in and out and fade in and out. And I guess, like, kind of what happened after that kind of faded out of my mind. Uh, I guess eventually they faded away. But for me, it kind of faded into my tears, and I guess maybe I fell asleep from exhaustion or sadness or something. But what happened was that uh, I guess Dari and Taffy's plan had worked out. They had, like, uh, done a ruse to let the, our community resource department and the regional community resource department know what Dr. Max was up to. So they had sent uh, authority figures to come, and they came to the school, and uh, they said, oh, we're, we're here to, uh, re, you know, community-based services and to help uh What's going on with all these weasels and these these are unauthorized authority figures and who's what's Dr. Max doing? And so they took they said, Well, we're gonna have to deal with some consequences for all of you. So they took them away and they brought us all. Uh, my parents were there and Dari and Tefe. And eventually we uh we all, like, you know, got actually because our community rallied around us and made sure that we slowly recovered our physical health and, you know, had the resources to deal with everything and process everything that had happened. And we were validated on the oddness of it all. 
And, I mean, it quickly it became, like, something that just people kind of remember in an inaccurate way. And Willow was there getting even more recovery services uh, so that she could, you know, marshal her own healing process, too. And slowly all of our health uh, started to restore. And we saw Willow and we visited her as she, she, she was, like... Uh, you know, like getting better and healthier and her journey. And our community was there for us and our family. I mean, my family's kind of there. And, Te you know, Tefe was like, oh, yeah, like uh, whatever. But Tefe was a little bit different, a little bit different. And soon it was a, like a season of giving and Willow was smiling again. And we got a new... uh uh, we got a new adventure to play in Bards and Big Bunnies. Dari had given Tefe a new audio, like a new used, like rebuilt Audi Rock Spindal. And she said, just so you know, this doesn't mean anything, though. Really, just so you know. But they stayed close, so I don't know what that mean, really means. I don't know. And soon we returned to playing Bards and Big Bunnies, and we had this renewed vigor of the game. Because it, it, instead of like, it, 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 like our imaginations were more expanded with more possibilities and then a visceralness that uh, some of this was real, but it was also fun. It was, uh, I don't know, we just really enjoyed it. And I don't know, we just felt closer. You know, three of my best friends uh, were there, Willow, Vaughn, and LJ. And then at night, you know, when I would be home, I would miss uh, Billy. But I also felt like she was there, like singing to me. I could feel her presence. I could feel the vibration of her voice. Uh, and I kind of imagined her in another world, snuggling with the, singing to the bunny and singing to me at the same time. And I would look at the night sky and say, okay, this is like the Fievel, a mouse in a movie we saw, which would look at the sky. And maybe Billy and the bunny were together looking at the sky. And I said, okay, well, all's well. It's not the well I wanted, but all is well. Now, little did I know that Billy was not with the bunny. She was out there. Uh, and she had, I guess she, had, I, I don't know exactly, but... Uh, you think she had brought the bunny back to the bunny's world, but she had returned to our world. And she was resting. She was living in the tree where we have the community resource fair since it was still months off. And uh, Leon was watching over her and bringing her food and blankets and comic books and also Bards and Big Bunnies and novels. Uh, which she was reading, and she had needed a lot of rest. Uh, but she she had everything she needed uh, to rest. Uh, but we didn't know that. And at night she would sing, and I would feel her presence close by. Because even though I didn't know it, she was nearby. And I guess the most important part of the story was, uh, you know, uh, Willow... Uh, D Dari and Francis's family unit was restored, but it was their life had changed. They had this new appreciation of one another, this new joy, uh, and this new n awareness of how important life was and how important it was to accept things that weren't so perfect, and just in how important love was. Uh, and supporting one another and being part of a community. And they really just started to treasure, not every moment, because they weren't perfect, but a lot of moments, uh, and laugh even more, knowing, uh, you know, that there's odd things in the world. Uh, but when I mention the pieces of imperfection, there is one part of the story I have to kind of close with. A little secret uh, to tide you over, a little secret Willow was keeping. Uh, she was keeping it from all of us because, uh, like, uh, on her side, like, underneath her fur on her right side, if you kind of reached under, right under on her side rib cage, there was some... Uh, 
what is that stuff called? Velcro. And, you know, that's not normally on a person, you know, an organic being. And if you pulled the Velcro up, uh, there's a plastic panel on there. Uh, like a, just a, kind of that hard, soft plastic, like a doll, like her body had changed in that one spot to a doll. And when she pulled up the Velcro and pushed on that spot, uh, she kind of made this, uh, this very quiet, uh, baby cry. It, it was like a, some sort of a mechanism, a mechanical one. When that cry came, she would see that other world where the bunny was uh, running around in a field of carrots, finally free, but also the strange tower going from one world to another world uh, through a piece of, and she said, Is it? but it wasn't a dream because she was wide awake and she would only do it when she was alone. And she didn't really tell anybody about it. Uh, it was odd. Uh, it was another odd uh, thing. Uh, but all all in all, it was also a reminder that uh, at least for now, all will be well as you get some rest. Uh, thanks for journeying to our swamp and hearing our tale of odd things that had happened. Maybe one day we'll speak again. But it's been my pleasure uh, to talk to you as uh, Emma Otter uh, reporting. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. Molly, Ariana, and Oliver. Thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Joanne, Michelle, and John. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Krista, Allison, and Christina. Thanks, 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 and good night. Brian, Quinn, and Kirsten, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Jane, V, Allie, and Jane Y, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Noah, Alyssa, and Philip, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Pamela, Catherine, and Randy, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Cheyenne, Angela, and Darren, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Charlie and Abby. Uh, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. So, this is the Exists a Free Podcast. Could be able to support, uh, support the show directly or support it on Patreon. Uh, that's how I'm able to be here twice a week for you. But we also grow and people find out about the show just by for free spreading the word when it comes up or talking about podcasts in general. Believe it or not, it has a huge uh, impact on sleep with me because eventually people find their way to the show. So just showing someone how to use a podcast app on their phone, first of all, it helps podcasting. Uh, then the second, you get to do something nice. And third, think about the person who discovered, think about it when you discovered podcasts for the first time, or maybe you're just starting to discover them. It's just a wonderful thing. So spread the word. Uh, thanks and good night.